to fail. It's not an option. Democracy is not something we can play with. It's not a partisan game. There is nothing in our country, in our history, more sacred than freedom and democracy. We are told in this country that vigilance is the price of freedom. Walk together, children. Don't get worried. And don't get weary. When the story broke publicly, did uh, anybody, did the media break down your door to try to figure out what the hell was going on here? In, in reference to the voting, mm -hmm. you're the only person who may have contacted me. CNN never called? No. AP? No. 60 Minutes? No. Major mainstream media has not touched this affidavit story, which is at the heart of what we're looking at here. You, I assume they're afraid. I mean, they, they did it Dan Rather. That's pretty impressive. So, you know, how safe do you feel compared to Dan Rather? This thing matters, and I don't care which side of the political spectrum you're on. I say frequently when I speak, this is not about left and right. This is about right and wrong. We have become numb to unethical behavior. Our, our lives are very difficult. We're clinging on to our middle class by our fingernails. We who? The American people. When you have that five minutes that you can be home and close the door and have some peace, it's very, very difficult to say, look what they're doing to my vote. It's much easier to say, we have watchdogs in place that will be taking care of this for me. And I think what we don't realize is those watchdogs are not in place. You're at the center of a, of a very explosive story where people have died, don't know if it was murder, mm -hmm. don't know if it was suicide. Dogs have died, don't know if it was murder. Probably wasn't suicide. Probably wasn't suicide. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. Yeah. I've never had this feeling before that there's no place to turn. Normally, you had the media. You'd go to the press. The press would uh, become furious, at least parts of it, enough of it. Or you'd go to your congressman. But nobody seems to care. We put this affidavit out in December. Of right. 2004. Have you seen it on ABC yet? I have not seen it on ABC. If you think that we're, we're going to get any use from the corporate media, I think that you're sadly mistaken. So I'm saying go around it. There is so much that we can do if we begin to act like we the people actually have power, exercising it. And guess what? You act like you have power, and the next thing you know, I'll be damned. You've got it. What do we say to our ancestors who gave their lives for this right to vote? We're sorry. Remember the words of Benjamin Franklin when he left the Constitutional Convention at Independence Hall and he was asked, what sort of government have you given us? And he said, a republic, if you can keep it. We have not kept it, we have not kept the flame, and we need to take this country back. Well, I don't know how much one vote counts, but uh, collectively, I guess if we all lose faith, then you know, might as well go uh, to the uh, Iraq during the Saddam era, you know, have unanimous elections or have North Korean democracy where it's like basically unanimous and you get killed if you don't vote for whoever whoever they want you to vote for. I mean, if our votes don't count, why bother voting? I think everybody should vote. I mean, if you don't uh, speak your piece, then nothing's going to get done. Well, it's a democracy, and everything needs to be counted correctly, and, and that's why we, one of the reasons why we live here. We're supposedly a country that is based upon democracy, and that's why we go out and try to export it and bomb it into other people, this notion of democracy. But it's important to us because we do claim and assert ourselves to be a democratic country that it actually exemplifies democracy.
I think the proof is kind of in the pudding. Um, when I see things start to change for, for the betterment of the people, um, rather than policies that seem to seem to benefit corporations and the wealthy, when I actually start to see things and government enact policies that actually help everyday people, uh, then I'll believe that voting is working. In his continuing effort to demand accountability and to publicize his story, Clint Curtis ran for Congress against Tom Feeney in 2006. Feeney refused to debate Curtis and outspent him by a factor of 26 to 1. Theirs was one of four congressional races in Florida that were contested in 2006, prompting Florida's new Republican governor and the Republican legislature to mandate that they would vote on paper ballots in the 2008 election, where Curtis will run again against Tom Feeney. Mavis George Jallis spent years in the courts fighting both the Yangs and FDOT. Ultimately, she was reinstated with full back pay and awarded a large settlement from the Florida Department of Transportation. In August 2007, Diebold changed its name to Premier Election Solutions, Inc. I think what Clint Curtis is, is really an object lesson in what can go wrong and how easily it can go wrong. In fact, we don't know if his software and his code was ever used in uh, any voting software. Uh, but the fact that we're not able to look at the software that is used to count our votes, this secret software that is used to count, of, count votes in America, the world's greatest democracy, is frankly a scandal. And we all should be very concerned about that. <laughs> Take this information, do something with it, go to Brad Blog, learn what's going on. Most importantly, this democracy is not going to save itself. We need all of you to get out there and take action. I'm Brad Friedman. Thanks for listening. Let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let.